Hi, my name is Pascal Doucette, uh, VP of Sale at Doucette Machinery. Today we're doing the live demo on the RETIX, the Return Intelligence System for Edge Banding Cell. Uh, today we have simulated an edge banding working cell. Uh, being aware that uh, all our RETIX system could be used with any type of edge bander brand. So here we are, here's the grapping head that will move from the, the seaming belt to the transfer belt. Uh, follow, and that grapping head right now, we have uh, the servo axis. One is the up and down. We also have a servo axis in the horizontal way. And also there's a rotation to rotate the part in the right angle for the operator to receive. We have the vacuum gripping head with our Julien head. Uh, they, they can grip any type of part uh, in any size, the system was selfly located based on the piece sizes, depending on to center as much as possible. Um, each axis comes with a servo motor. Uh, you can see the horizontal way going with the timing belt to maintain our position at all times. Same thing for the horizontal. And the rotation one is a direct drive with a is direct drive inside the head. So. Here I am now at the operator position. Uh, as the piece are coming back on the return section, the operator has a foot pedal to raise the table to the same height of feeding. And then as he translates the piece toward the edge banner. The line of sensor that we have here is combining with another one we have hidden behind. It's just because the RITIX is a, will try to estimate the piece sizes that you're processing. The reason why we need to have a length and a width uh, is to self-manage the head position versus the piece sizes, but also to control the flow of the product and to determine, uh, for example, if the piece is too large to be turned, the system will self-manage on that part and also trying to locate the head in the center of the pieces as much as possible. Okay, here uh, we're going to overview the HMI screen. Uh, it's been designed to be very user-friendly for the operator. So in the top screen here, where I'm circling my finger, are the preset recipe that has been made by the operator or and it's upon your production, you can create your own recipe, which is the, the order you're gonna pass your panel through. Uh, then you can create, if you go to the pattern mode, this is where you picked up which are your eight recipe and you can create your own manual ones if you wish to. Uh, now we're going to return back to the main HMI screen where at the bottom of the screen here this is the actual recipe or the active recipe that we're going to process to. So you can see the green edges is your third edge, the yellow one is your second edge, third edge, fourth edge and you can see in which order they're going to pass through and the final position is the stackering position. So you can activate or not the stacking position. Right now it's going to be activated. That's the bat mode activation. So if you decide to pass multiple panels and or individual panel in sequence, so we're going to overview that as we go to the uh, the demo later on. You can pass everything in automatic or in manual mode by having the selector. Manual functions are for troubleshooting, making the zero to the servo motors. Uh, the, so if I go to the bottom screen here, I can use a manual function and as we could see, I could, in manual function, I'd be able to know where the pneumatic valves are located, which status is active, I can make a move in manual and I got all the alarm pages if there was any. At the bottom of the operator uh, console, there's four buttons uh, in which are related, the same color related to the edge passes. So in some uh, operation mode, the operator can, every time he feed a panel, he can be indicating which pass he's on, so to give the instruction to the RITX what to do with the next panel. So for the video demonstration we're going to do today, you're going to see on each panel we kind of put like color signal. So those color signal refer to the same color signal that we have on the button on the screen. So. 
because we program a specific recipe, we want to be very visual showing you if we're following the tracking of the part. So um, the, the, the green, if every time we're going to pass a green tape, it's going to turn the same way. And when we do the red tape, every time it's going to be going stacking. So, and then there's going to be a different rotation. So we're going to run the system in batch mode and independent mode uh, later on the video, as the video progress. But uh, so let's start. So the first sequence we're going to do is in batch mode. So as you could see, the operator activate uh, the green light behind him and now he's going to pass all the green tapes. So that's the pass number one of those panels. Uh, so as the feet are getting throughout, we, we locate those parts. That's why you can see an acceleration on the bell conveyor to really locate the part as quick as possible. The gantry head is designed to do up to 12 cycles a minute when we do a returning cycle and it could do a minimum of seven piece per minute if we are doing a stacking mode and the reason we are limited to seven is when you need to stack at the lowest level of the height so now as we're again as we were in batch mode the next pass is going to be the yellow line so as you could see on the return all the fees were created on the pass number two, which is for us the yellow line. And now that we are all come back on the, that's our second pass, the P is gonna be turned 180 degree versus earlier on, it turned only a 90 degree. So, as we are coming out now, you can see the red, the red, the red indicator being on this operator. So that means it was our last passes. So that's why every piece now is going to the stacking mode at that point. So on the stacking mode, we can do up to a seven cycles a minute, but if the pile is higher, technically it will do more cycles per minute. So uh, what uh, we're going to show you now is the, the big part sequence. So right now we're running it three by seven pieces. So when we're running in the long direction, even if you, the operator did request a 90 degree turn, the system will uh, recognize it could not turn the piece. So it would only carry it the right way on the return side, okay? Uh, so on the second pass, uh, as we're gonna see, the system is gonna force a 90 degree turn. No matter, even if you're only asking to want to do a 180 on the sequence, the system would have done only a 90 degree. You can note also, because it read the size of the pieces, that the head was not waiting at the zero mode that we see earlier on it came back and pick it up more in the center of the pieces and we're gonna we're gonna do that sequence again in stacking so again uh, the system just read at the entry point that the piece is seven foot long so when we're gonna approach the exit you're gonna see the head is parked as a different position than normal because you want to be as much as center as much in the center as possible from the part now I'm gonna go to stacking but the system's gonna recognize and it's gonna force a 90 degree turn for the stacking position. Now we're running into the random mode style. So that means every time the operator is feeding a part, uh, he's kind of indicating to the system where to go because based on the pass he's doing. That could also mean like if you were coming if we were interacting with a ERP signal, barcode, that kind of stuff, uh, we could uh, the, the the ERP system could uh, relay the information to the Redix, knowing what to do. At all time, we need that signal when we're coming in into the bender because we're the Redix manage the queue of part in transit into the edge bender. So now as you can see on the return, we don't have always the same indicator at the same position. It depends on where 
The operator has said he was in the queuing sequence. 